In this video, I'll be showing you the process for image acquisition using the Odyssey CLX. So when you open up Image Studio, uh, it should automatically make a connection to your instrument. And from here, this is where you will set up your parameters. And you can choose from a series of presets that are on here, uh, depending on what type of application you are doing. So if you're doing a Western blot, you're going to use the membrane presets. Uh, if you have a, say a Cyto 60 stain gel, you're gonna use the DNA gel. Uh, Kumasi stain gel, you use protein. Uh, if you're doing a Incel Western or a plate-based assay, you'll do that or animal imaging, you can use these presets through here. So I'm gonna set this for membrane. And the next thing here in the setup is the ability to choose your analysis type. So if you know your analysis type going in and you know that you're going to use that, you can just go ahead and set that right here. So we can either go with a Western analysis or I'm going to set this for no analysis. Now this can be changed later on, but just for simplicity, I'm going to go with no analysis to begin with. The next button here is the image table info. And if when you click on that, this brings up uh, a window where you can enter in information about the scan before it starts. So if I were to enter in, uh, say, antibody information or sample information into the comment field right here, that text would show up in this column right here uh, with, the, um, with the scan. And you can either have it apply to just the first scan that you do right here, or if this is checked, it will apply to all scans that you do while you have this session of Image Studio open. And what that means is that if you close out Image Studio and open it back up, this field will be cleared out. But you can enter that information later on. So if I did want to add a comment later on, all I would do is come to the appropriate uh, image, double click on the comment field, and then I can enter in that information there. Now the Odyssey CLX has two different scan modes. It has an auto scan, which is the setting right now, or if I click that, it turns it into a manual scan. The auto scan has the benefit of having a wider dynamic range for doing scans. And so if you have, uh, say, a, a weak signal and a very strong signal on the same membrane, that gives you the, the dynamic range to fit it all onto one image. Uh, Generally, auto is what you want to use, but if you do have a blot where you need intensities higher than, say, a setting of five, uh, if you have a, a low background uh, but very low signal, you can turn this intensity up a little bit higher uh, so that you're able to visualize your bands. And if you do go with a manual scan, uh, the way this works is that a higher value will give you a higher signal intensity. Now I'm gonna intentionally turn this up a little bit too high so that you can see what happens if you do set this too high, uh, which will give you some saturations. And um, so the next setting on here is the resolution. And the resolution is a measurement of how large each one of the pixels are. So a higher value means that it is a larger pixel and will be lower resolution. And generally for Western blots, we recommend either 169 or 84 microns. Uh, what we have found is that if you go with the higher resolutions, the 21 or the 42, for Western blots, it really doesn't do, give you much of an advantage. It just takes longer to scan and takes up more file space. And a 337 scan, which is what I'm going to do right here, uh, is a pretty low resolution scan. As you'll see uh, that you can see um, some pixel or jagged edges to the bands, and it just doesn't look very crisp. The next setting here is the quality, and this is essentially the scan speed. And the default setting is lowest, and that is generally what we recommend. Uh, what you will see is if you go with a higher quality, you will get a very minor increase in the signal to noise, uh, but generally it's best just to go with the lowest because that will give you the fastest scan. The next setting on here is the focus offset. And for membranes, you're just going to leave this at zero because that is right at the plane of the glass. If you are doing a uh, Kumasi stain gel that is one millimeter thick, you would set this to 0.5 millimeters so that it would be imaging directly in the center. If you're doing a DNA agarose gel, you would just set that to 
whatever half the thickness is. So if, it, if it's approximately three millimeters, you would set that to 1.5. For the animal imaging, that is something that will have to be empirically determined to see what gives you the best uh, imaging and the best resolution and the best uh, signal uh, from the mouse. For the plate-based assays, 96-volt uh, plates generally have about a 3-millimeter offset, and that is the distance from the glass to the bottom of the well. And other size plates may... Uh, need a little different offset, but generally for the 96, as I mentioned, it is about three millimeters. The flip image is only for doing plates. Uh, since it is imaging from underneath, uh, it does have to flip it top to bottom to get it into the correct orientation for analysis. So you can either come here and draw new, uh, or you can edit the one that is already here on the screen. And these coordinates on here correspond to the coordinates that you will see when you place your blot down on the uh, scan bed of the CLX. And so I'm just going to leave it at the default right now. And so I'm going to do a high intensity 337 scan, and then I'm going to press start. And you will see the image appear as it's scanning. So if you notice that something is very off, if you scan the wrong area, if you have... Uh, the intensity is too high like I have right here, you can just go ahead and cancel the scan. Now, if the uh, scan has gone far enough and you just simply want to stop it, you just press stop. Stop will save the scan. Uh, cancel will not save the scan. It just deletes everything out. So as I mentioned right here with the, uh, with the high intensities, we are seeing a fair bit of uh, saturations on here and if you do want to quantify your bands uh, you definitely do not want to have any saturations uh, on your bands so we'll just watch this as it's coming up and that probably has scanned far enough so I'm going to head going to go ahead and press stop now, once you have this on here, you can change the scan area to fine tune the area that you want to scan. And these do go in millimeter increments, so it, it does give you a fair bit of uh, leeway as far as uh, placement of the box on here. Now, a few other features that are on this uh, choir ribbon. If I wanted to, I can add a secondary scan area. So if you have more than one blot that you want to scan, if you click add, it will then scan that area as well. Now this is really where the advantages for the auto scan come into play because if you go with a manual scan, each one of these scan areas will be scanned using the same intensity. And if you have a wide range of fluorescent signal between the two blots, uh, using the manual will not give you uh, the best images. <laughs> but if you do the auto scan, that really allows you to, uh, even if they have a wide range of uh, fluorescent intensities, that um, this will give you a much better image. And you can add as many additional scans as, as you want. Um, now, if all the blots are the same size, you can just draw a scan area that encompasses all of the blots. So just... Uh, for example, let's say I had four blots on here. I could split this into a two by two, and then each one of these are separate scan areas, and each one would get its own image file uh, once, once the scanning has been completed. So I'm going to go ahead and do an auto scan, and I'm going to press start. So I'm just going to zoom in here a little bit, and the image will come up here momentarily. Now the auto does take a little longer to scan uh, than, than a manual scan, but the, the real advantage is that um, you chances are you'll probably only have to do a single scan uh, because it does have that very wide dynamic range.
So once the scan has completed, you will notice that there will be a series of pop-up windows that come up. And the first one that we see right here is some auto adjustments to the image. Now this has no effect whatsoever on any kind of quantification. This is simply changing the presentation uh, for the screen. And so you just look at the six different images that you have right here and pick the one that looks the best. And then it will take you into another window where you can do some fine tuning. So we have the signal, which is the overall brightness of the image. So I can go brighter with it if I need to. The next one is the background. So this is setting the, the background threshold uh, for the image. And then we have the midtones. The midtones is analogous to gamma correction. And if we look at this pop-up right here, uh, the biggest difference between K value and gamma is that a K value of one is a logarithmic expression and a k value of zero would be the same as a gamma correction of one. So a gamma of one is linear and a k value of zero is linear. So once I've gone through all that, I press done and then it brings up uh, the adjustments for the 800 channel as well. And so I can click on that and then I'm just going to simply click done right now. Now if you do not want those pop-up windows to appear after the scanning. If you come over to the image ribbon and look at the display group, there are the options for this display group, and then you can turn off those auto pop-ups. Now further image adjustments and uh, analyses are covered under uh, other videos. And so if you have any further questions about image acquisition on the Odyssey CLX, uh, please refer to the help section up here. Thank you.